Dear friends, this presentation is about the use of the Axe intracameral hemodramatic solution in a grade 3 nuclear cataract. And at first, let me address certain myths and certain facts that exist about the use of intracameral hemodramatic solutions. The case that you see in front of you is not a non dilating pupil. This pupil was purposely not dilated so that we could use the intracameral mitriatic agents to dilate the pupil intraoperatively. During preoperative workup about a week ago, it was ascertained that this pupil was dilating to 6 mm. Remember, intracameral mitriatics won't dilate non dilating pupils. Pre op evaluation is a must. So, therefore, the question we ask is why to dilate with intracameral when the pupils are dilating well with drops? Some advantages I can think of is that it makes FACO a truly walk-in procedure, minimizes patient waiting time in the surgery, which is useful in these COVID times, and it is useful for those patients who have allergy to dilating drops, especially the preservatives. The dose of drug use is much less, and the drug is delivered directly onto the receptors, and in addition, the drug gets washed out by irrigation so that the pupil gets back to its near normal size by the end of surgery. The AXE solution is also probably the most potent intracameral mitriatic solution in the market because of its ingredients and it's also very cost effective. The disadvantage is that you need to reconstitute in the OT, but it is pretty simple procedure to do so. Now let's move on to the surgery itself. 0.5 ml of the AG solution is injected into the anterior chamber. What you're watching is in real time. Now how to reconstitute the AG solution in the operation theater under sterile conditions I've already shown in another video. Now it takes about 30 to 40 seconds for the pupil to dilate and the pupil dilation occurs in two phases. A rapid phase that kicks on almost immediately and becomes fully effective in about 20 to 30 seconds. This is brought on by the epinephrine and a slow phase which will start around 30 seconds after the injection and its maximum effect is reached within two minutes. So about a minute has passed and you can see that the pupil is still dilating, still keeps on dilating. So by the time you are ready to make the clear corneal incision into the anterior chamber, the pupil is fully dilated to about 6.5 millimeters, which was the max dilatation that we achieved with topical mitriatic drops. Pre-operative. The capsular rexis is initiated from one o'clock position. So you make a radial drag towards one o'clock and then you initiate the capsular rexis. This is a grade three nuclear sclerotic cataract. It's not a soft cataract and it's not a, a very hard cataract. I purposely chose this hard cataract to show the effectivity of the intracameral midriatic solution by the end of the surgical procedure. Because many of us are aware that when we handle harder cataracts, the pupil shutdown occurs many times towards the end of the surgical procedure. The injection of the intracameral mitriatic is given only once and in this particular case I did not give any top up of the solution during the procedure. The technique which I am following is the direct chop using a compact machine and I am using something known as a variable white star in the power setting mode, a flow rate of 35 cc per minute and a vacuum of 350 millimeters of mercury. As we proceed with the direct chop maneuver, dividing this hard grade 3 nuclear sclerotic cataract into multiple smaller fragments that can be mobilized and removed from within the capsular bag. I want you to note, uh, not the way the nucleus is being disassembled, but I want you to note how the pupil is holding throughout the whole thing.
also note that the conjunctiva looks pristine and not at all congested. This is being operated under topical anesthesia. This is because the patient has not received, except for preservative free moxifloxacin, the patient has not received any midriatic drops to dilate the pupil, which is the reason why the conjunctiva looks so pristine and untouched. So as the nucleus is broken down into smaller fragments, you can see that there is nuclear fragments are now being mobilized into the anterior chamber. The fragments are coming in contact with the iris and this is the stage where the pupil generally begins to shut down slightly in most cases. Because of the sharp tip of the nuclear fragments come in contact with the iris surface that uh, stimulates the receptors in the iris surface to contract. But because of the strong potent effect of atropine, find that this pupil still remains rock solid at the end of phacoemulsification. Irrigation aspiration is performed, the visibility is good and the pupil holds very well. So just before implanting the intraocular lens, we find that the pupil is adequately dilated. Maybe it has come down slightly by a millimeter. So from around uh, 6.5 to around 6 millimeters. But it has not drastically constricted. The intraocular lens is implanted directly within the capsular bag. The viscoelastic is washed out. So the good news about using intracameral midriatic solutions is that they act directly on the receptors, that is the sympathomimetic receptors and uh, the cholinesterase receptors. And therefore, during the process of phacoemulsification and IA, the irrigating fluid washes off much of these uh, agents. So by the time you reach the end of the procedure, so I'm sealing the wound by compression, but out technique. By the time you come to the end of the procedure, the pupil has come down to around 5 millimeters. Now this patient is made to wait in the OPD till I finish my list of four cases. And I again revisited the patient one hour later. And this was the picture. The pupil has now come down to around 3.5 to 4 millimeters. The patient had no photophobia at all. The cornea was crystal clear and there was no anterior chamber inflammation indicating that this intracameral mitriatic solution is safe and effective to the internal milieu of the eye. I thank you for your attention.